Welcome back to Next Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek mm-hmm. break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of open source, big ones, and other mysterious, terrifying things. I am Vince Stone, that is Joe Bryant, and over mm-hmm. there is Juan Pedro Mateus, joined every week with you, live Yay. at home. Chat. <laughs> Man, lots and lots of stuff going on. We got a new month. It is the month of the July, according mm-hmm. to the Gregorian calendar, which... Julius. <laughs> yeah, July it's Julius, the first. man. <laughs> Hopefully everybody's having a great weekend. It's the middle of the week. I'm like, oh, I'll take a break from working at home. Some of you are unfortunate enough to be working at home or fortunate enough to be working at home or vice versa, man. Hope it's <laughs> yeah. working out for you no matter what. <laughs> yes. As is tradition, Pedro never puts anything in the notes for like, what you been up to, man? So you go first. I mean, nothing mm-hmm. happened spectacular this week. I guess I did put a um, a new cooler on my uh, 3700X because... That's what you didn't you know. He, he hasn't been able to figure out a way to hold the cooler up to the camera. It's like, no. <laughs> no, but I can hold <laughs> the uh, little screwdriver that it came with. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, nice it's not a one. little <laughs> screwdriver. It's a, it's a long boy, this one. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, it's a Be Quiet Dark Rock 4. Not the pro version, because the pro version, it's got like eight uh, heat pipes. That one only has the six. But with that in place, and once I get the new motherboard, we can start pushing like the 4.3, 4.4 gigahertz all car overclock on the 3700X. Nice. <laughs> Man, what's new with you, Joe? Ah, so and it had a, had a great uh, last Friday, uh, Friday morning. I was on the English Bob's Linux news show again, and that was a lot of fun. And then we had a great time playing golf with your friends on our Friday foo bar. It's always a lot of fun. <laughs> Whether you do well or not, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Janky physics. Golf with your friends is an interesting game, especially... It for me, I sit back and watch it because people attempt to get competitive, and what is ultimately just a <laughs> have, yeah. have fun, you know. Yeah. Like if you get to the other end, you put the ball in the hole, and like, all right, that happened. If you don't, like, oh, okay. I don't know. It's one of the best party games around. I think <laughs> it's kind of an interesting one. So, <laughs> get a couple things to go done. Uh, the first one I do want to mention, just give a little shout out because I'm not sure if it really works yet. Is uh. We've set up the Twitch integration with our Discord server of Mighty yes. Justice and Ultimate Business. So if you're a sum, I think we have like 30. Do we have we have subs, don't we, Pedro? We do. Okay. Yes. I don't remember exactly how many, but we do. <laughs> okay, or 30, it tells me. No. Like, oh, that's a thing. But if you go to your Discord and then it should get you into general disarray. And if it doesn't, uh, and you can't send me the message, do you're like, oh, like <laughs> I just thought about that. I was like, well, if it doesn't yeah. work, it's going to be fun telling me. Um, that's definitely 100% a thing. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, guest box has been wired in. It's a little HP desk Yay. 600 something. <laughs> so we should be able to start pulling people into the show to talk to them, have a little chat with them. That's a thing. That's going to be brilliant. Um, still got to test awesome. on that. I did release uh, for this curious little moon device. No, no, no. What you're seeing is not a diseased iPod from 2009. <laughs> nay. Nay. <laughs> this, this was a straight up curiosity, man, because yeah, this is a phonic Firefly, which I'm familiar with, like the, not the two series, but the three series. Um, this I'd never seen before. And I asked the internet and the internet's like, well, People have sold them before, but there's no information on it. So I made some information mm. on it. I plugged this in and gave it the business. And uh, that video, speaking of Discord, is in the announcements section. If you want to go take a look at that, it's a thing. Um, a little early for patrons. I still got to do all, like, all the benchmark uh, mm-hmm. graphs and punch all the data stuff in. And after I'm done with that, I'm going to be doing a little thing. I still think these are the coolest little tins. 10 G Tech, you did awesome on these. These are sweet. Um, they're like Mentos tins, but that got a hold of the wrong <laughs> stuff. Mm-hmm. And they're nice and padded. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Why do we have this? Because I want to simplify, man. I looked around in the internet and I watched a couple of videos between like the 15 to 30 minute long videos of people really not understanding how multi-mode fiber transceivers work and what you should buy versus like OM3, OM4 cable or OM2. I can do that in about five minutes. So I am. 
Um, I'm going to put that out for everyone. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for like 10 gig networking on the cheap and the home from stuff that we're currently using right now, you know, this is not going to be the setup for, I want to drag my movie collection from this computer to this computer exactly once. Probably not going to be the video that's interesting you, but <laughs> if, you, if you need to sling six or seven gigabits uh, a second over a network without any collision errors or anything like that for, oh, I don't know, four plus hours at a time, might be something you want to watch. Just saying. Very cool. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> just, just use Wi-Fi. It works. I hear that's what the kids use these days for everything. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not with the kids anymore i've come to that conclusion oh man yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm definitely not <laughs> one thing the kids are excited about is rolling linux distributions mm -hmm. so let's talk about rolling rhino man this is the new hotness uh this is ubuntu they're basically getting Yay. their own version of debian testing so this is a little script mm -hmm. wimpy put out that will convert ubuntu to a rolling release uh that tracks the dev series for the toughest of Ubuntu users. I'm just going to leave that alone. Um, what does it say on the tin? Let's see. Rolling Rhino, simple tool to convert, has been installed from a daily image. Rolling release opting in, track dev series, intended for Ubuntu developers and experienced Ubuntu users uh, who want Ubuntu and some track all the development updates. So, yeah, this this is like a rolling re release question mark. It, just switching over to the devs. <laughs> Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Debian testing, and um, it, it can't detect your PPAs or desktop meta packages yet, but it, it may at some point. <laughs> and actually, you know, Wimpy's been talking about this uh, actually for the last few months. I heard him talking about it on uh, Big Daddy Linux Live about uh, having an official Ubuntu rolling release. So th this is a great first step, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, it can sort of kind of detect PPAs as in it detects if you have any or not. Uh, oh, it just yeah. looks in the uh, app sources list directory uh, to see if you have any like PPA um, list files uh, in there. And if it does, it goes, this is your problem. You <laughs> <Yeah>. deal with it. <laughs> you We're deal not with going it. to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, and yeah, no, I guess, you know, for people just regular desktop home users who want something that they don't have to worry about updating every six months uh, and they don't want to use a really really old lts 1804 using person right here uh, <laughs> the i guess this is a good alternative maybe Mm -hmm. We'll see. Maybe I mean, I expect to read all adventurous. the news about all the breakage. <laughs> oh, it's going to break. We're talking yeah. um, before we're live. I'm yeah. not wishing it or willing it to break in any way, but it, it, I couldn't even tango with like Debian testing because it would still occasionally <laughs> break. And that was quite unfortunate. This, this could definitely be exciting if you want to live on the cutting edge and you're the afraids of Arch. You know, there definitely was a time in my life. Absolutely, there was a legitimate time in my life that I loved the idea of a rolling release, uh, and I wanted to run the latest and greatest, but then I took a production studio to the knee, and my wants and desires and what I look for in a distribution mm. completely changed. I'm like, is that going to stay the same for, I don't know, how long a decade? Yeah, that's good. Let's do that. <laughs> Backport security updates, that's all we get? Sure, let's rock and roll, man. Um, you go try it out right now, right? That's just something you can flip on. Yeah, and you can. On. It, it's on GitHub. Mm -hmm. You can either clone to Git or just straight up copy paste the uh, the shell script and r r run it. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> up next. Yay. Yeah, so this is really cool minty freshness. So, so this is Linux Mint 20 Cinnamon. Desktop has been released with lots of major... New re features, along with the removal of snaps that we've been talking about for a while. So no <laughs> snap packages, but you can enable them. <laughs> there is a way to enable them. But anyways, uh, the 
there's a lot of uh, awesome features in this version. And one is they made uh, uh, file sharing easy again. Um, they used to have an app called Giver and uh, they had taken that away and now it's called Warpinator. And what it does is it detects any other uh, Linux Mint install on your network and just automatically, automatically makes it easy to share files back and forth. So it's really easy to use. And um, years ago, that's one of the reasons I used to recommend Linux Mint to new users. So it's nice to have that back again. And this, this is actually something really big. And now we have per monitor fractional scaling options for multi-monitor setups. You can scale not only from 100% and 200%, but at 125%, 150%, and 175% as well. And, you know, this is really great, especially when you're dealing with different resolutions of monitors. Like here, I have not only different resolutions of monitors, but I have landscape and portrait together. And this makes it a lot easier to match up your, your resolutions from your monitors and uh, the scaling of each monitor. So it worked really, really well. So yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> they did something really clever because if you have been, you know, dealing with the high DPI or even slightly different resolution monitors uh, on your Linux setup, you've probably gone, it's like, can I do like per monitor scaling and have like different <laughs> scaling in each monitor? And you probably ran into the same thing that a lot of us did. Not with X, you can't. And uh, Wayland's yeah. not there <laughs> yet. So uh, you'd basically be stuck in trying to find like the happy medium between, oh, 125% looks really good on this, but it's huge on that one. So let's find something that's a bit smaller. <laughs> this, they're not actually doing X scaling. They're doing um, GTK scaling. Mm. They're yeah. just uh, scaling the GTK elements of the UI, like the text and everything else, and applying the scaling to that. So it only scales the UI. But I do wonder what that will do to some games. <laughs> <laughs> that could work. It could not. I mean, what are you going to be dealing with if you're in a KDE environment, though? Uh, KDE has had fractional scaling for a long time. Yeah. I gave him that one. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> Like a long time. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there's multiple ways to work around. That's something that definitely might want to take a look at. You know, I'm sitting with a 43 inch and like a 28 inch that, you know, is in yes. show note mode. Then I have another 28 inch over UHD. Both of these are UHD. This one's causing me to hit my, uh, my car. <laughs> uh, but it's only 1080p. And my workaround is, well, you know what? You're the browser monitor now. Why? Because control plus. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had a lot of fun configuring it with my 43 inch um, Ultra HD and my 1080p monitor and my 1440. And it was really nice being able to have those in between 100% and 200. Um, that's been an issue with uh, Ubuntu Mate actually right now with my setup. So it's it, Cinnamon worked beautifully with that. And I'm looking forward to trying to play a, a game spanning my three monitors with the new fractional scaling features. And again, I mean, ideally, it doesn't is... touch the GLX context, so it should be fine. No. Yeah, it should, should be. be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Another shout out to Warpinator. I mean, that's a ridiculous. That, that's yeah. a tool that should be included with everything mm -hmm. because even yes. I've the work just having for the average users like I want to get something from here to my laptop. Boop yeah. boop done. So easy. Discoverability. Just yeah. nothing to mess around with. And as opposed to, you know what? Google Drive it is. Let's send this halfway across the earth in order to <laughs> get it here. Um, it's definitely a thing. Good news, everyone. Exilus developer yes. is now creating Yay. a truly modern Linux distribution called <laughs> Snake Jazz OS. <laughs> yes. It's not called Snake Jazz OS, but it should be. It yeah. will be. I got money on it. Um, <laughs> Snake Jazz OS. Uh, man, I, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, I get dorty. 
Uh, you may remember yeah. him from that interview, what we did, or far more likely, uh, the person uh, who used to do like a lot of Intel clear Linux <laughs> stuff, and the person who created Solus. That so, Solus, this has got a lot going for it. I'm looking at the screenshot here, man. You could call it Lightbringer OS. Uh, some people know that. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Lucifer. Right. Um, Morning Star OS. That'll be great. That could be a thing. Um, Radiation. 100% clang built, <laughs> including the kernel, um, libc++ instead of stdc. That's UEFI only. You know, don't bring into that legacy mm -hmm. boot. I, yeah. That, okay, yeah, UEFI is a thing. Of course, if you can remember, it's like when that didn't work, but now it just works. That's good. Uh, completely open source, down to the bootstrap, rebuild scripts. That's great. Wayland only. X11 compatibility via containers will be investigated. So Wayland only. Um, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this is interesting moving away from just the x86 64 generic baseline. So when you're compiling your kernel, you know, you have like the old K8 Optra and Hammer stuff like that. Then you get whatever, then you get basically what every kernel ships with is just the generic x86 64, mm -hmm. but they're going to be doing, um, some specific CPU optimizations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, I remember actually having a talk with Ike a long, long time ago when uh, Google Plus still had the Hangouts in it on the side. Yeah, that was how long ago that was. And I remember it's like I saw the bullet points in uh, its Foss's article and it's like, that sounds familiar. So I went and I went through the uh, the hangout. It's like, oh, there's that one. There's that one. There's that <laughs> one. I see what you're doing. <laughs> so yeah, no, he's actually decided, you know what? Let's just make this happen. Because one of the things that he brought up was remove the dependency from the uh, GNU yeah. tool chain mm -hmm. and everything else that it brings with it, especially, you know, all of those people uh so remove that and make it a operating system that is more about the operating system itself and how you can work with your computer with your operating system than it is about making it work with this thing and making it work with that thing and making it pleasing to this particular brand of politics and making it pleasing to that particular license agreement so it's yeah. very much an OS for the sake of being a good OS, or it will be. That's a good idea. Hopefully. I say rock and roll <laughs> with it, you know. I was reading through the blog post, uh, all this is going to be in our show notes, uh, and I, I kind of tripped up because there was two quote, this is a project setting out to use Linux as Linux should be used. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Bold move, Cotton. Because <laughs> I'm gonna go out and I can make you the know, argument I'm, that that's Fedora, but whatever. I'm just gonna nah. go out and let him. Uh, <laughs> I just keep muting him until I get a sentence out. Uh, and say that you know it's kind of up to Linus and his wacky te tech tips to uh, explain what Linux should be used for, right? I mean, when you think about it. <laughs> hmm? Well, the. You know, NVIDIA driver issue is 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 in interesting, and um, you know, uh, who, who knows? The open source NVIDIA drivers are getting better, so maybe that's a thing. <laughs> they are still a dumpster fire. They, yeah, are, and that <laughs> is, I'm not saying anything negative towards the Nuvo <laughs> team working on them. It's still a dumpster fire, not through any fault yeah. of their own. But what I'm no. definitely looking at, you know, is <laughs> if we're going to be rolling out Wayland only. That completely just wax my production tool chain 100%. Oh, yeah. But it does. It's gone. It obliterates <laughs> it. There's there's no option B because I'm not an NVIDIA shill. You know, I'm not. Um, isn't that right, Lydus? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> my issue is... Um, because, well, you need NVIDIA. Can't use NVIDIA or Wayland. Okay, I'd use AMD. That's not my problem. Mm -hmm. My problem is until Pipewire is fully baked, and we're including Jack support and NetJack support, also yeah. the ability with OBS, uh, I need being able to pipe through video to record. Um, I can't touch Wayland. I just can't. So mm -hmm. I, I will sit back and watch this with great interest. But I, I do want to ask something that's probably on the minds of uh, anybody who's kept track of stuff like this. Pedro, how long do you think, uh, is it reasonable to 
question how long Ike's going to stay with this one. <laughs> no, that's uh, oh. very reasonable because he I have he's to never, ask you know, that terribly that's going comfortable to be the first sitting question. in one place. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, with Solus, he was there for a few years, and he tried the previous Solus that was Debian-based for a couple of years, too. So, yeah, clearly, he's looking for something. Maybe this will yeah. be it. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> this one could stick the landing, man. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's well, cool. you know, with Ike at the helm, truly visionary progress <laughs> happens in Linux. Uh, he's proved it with Solus. So, you know, and I know he wanted something even more independent than Solus. So this, this is his answer. And I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing what, what we get. He's truly trying to progress Linux. So, very what cool. do we have up next? XPS 13. <laughs> yes, Dell. They uh, have been uh, doing very good with the uh, XPSs. And the according mm -hmm. to the Canonical blog, you the new Dell XPS. Laptops. I'm looking at like, I'd snap that in half. <laughs> it's too thin. <laughs> yes, quite slim. <laughs> yes, it is very slim. Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, the this one comes from the Canonical blog, and they say that the new uh, Dell XPS 13 Developer Edition. Uh, I think it's uh, 7390. I could be wrong, but that looks like the 7390. Uh, it's now available, and it comes with uh, GNOME 336, uh, new and updated applications like LibreOffice 6.4 and uh, Thunderbird 68.7. Over 6,000 steps. Stop. Just stop, canonical. <laughs> um, and uh, the big difference, like, hardware-wise, is the... Um, the bigger screen. Um, and with the bigger screen comes a big touchpad and the big keyboard well mm. it's a little bit bigger they call it the edge to edge keyboard honestly i don't really care about the touchpad because if i'm doing something that would require a larger touchpad i just plug in a usb mouse and call it a day um and they do claim that it was rated for 18 hours and 49 minutes of yeah. battery life and uh, full hd to keep you powered on the go it's like that's an impressive number yeah. That that Definitely. is an impressive I will number. <laughs> have you know 720p is very much still considered a standard for HD. <laughs> D they say yeah. FHD plus, so <laughs> interlaced. 10% brightness. 1080i. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh. We kid. <laughs> well, I think this is cool cuz you know the Project Sputnik flagship Linux laptop keeps on giving. And it's got a great price point starting at just under $2,000. And I was looking at the specs and for an extra $100, I would increase the RAM to 16 gigabyte minimum, of course. <laughs> that, that to me should be standard. Um, and I love that the base model screen has one of my favorite resolutions, 1920 by 1200. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, uh, 1610 borderless. <laughs> yeah, practically borderless, too. It's really cool. <laughs> it's the infinity display, as they call it. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's very clearly finite. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I, yeah. Would, I can admit that I've definitely sit back and like have been quietly applauding Apple this entire time. I'm like, you finally did it. Why? <laughs> because when Apple yeah. does something, whether or not you want to admit it, they're never the first to do it. They set the industry standard. Yes. <laughs> We're getting ARM laptops. Yeah. In silicon. <laughs> two, three years. And we're going to get all the... What? I have an ARM laptop. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah. You have a tablet Netbooks. with a keyboard on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The one that you can't detach, therefore a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some super glue. I can fix this. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I have the Gorilla Epoxy. Yeah. <laughs> That's not the only laptop we got to talk about this week, though. Yeah, no. this is really exciting. <laughs> From our, our friends over at System76, this is the Oryx Pro 6 laptop, which is just launched. And this is honestly one of the most innovative, performant, and versatile and light and thin laptops on the market. And the big deal about this laptop is for the first time ever, System76 has loaded its open firmware, open source firmware, onto a machine with NVIDIA graphics. Ooh. And uh, their open firmware features 
Core Boot firmware and EDK2. Okay, how long did that take till we got to a bad Photoshop at the screen? Um. Ah, there we go. Yeah, it, is. it was a solid two pictures. <laughs> two pictures. <laughs> the third one was the uh, bad shoot. <laughs> So it has EDK t- K- K2, excuse me, and uh, as well as System76 firmware apps. And of course, you can seamlessly toggle between Intel and NVIDIA RTX 20 series graphics, which is really nice. And, and uh, Linux makes that so much easier now. And this also gives you great battery life. And this is not a Ryzen processor, but it is a, a really nice uh, 10th gen Intel Core i7 by default and it has eight cores and 16 threads and up to 64 gigs of ram which is really nice specs <laughs> no chill no chill system 76 pedro do you see a problem with the screenshot um the witcher 3 what yeah <laughs> yeah that is <laughs> so, so you're gonna rock out and be like yeah linux all the thing this this is the game that famously never came to linux because cd project yep. red told the yeah. linux community to die in a fire um just, because yeah, they got their fifis a bit hurt on accounts of what happened with port. the witcher 2 yeah <laughs> <laughs> Still, good laptop <laughs> yes <laughs> yes then oh I want to see more, uh, especially if System76 aren't the only ones doing it, then they should do more. Yeah. But I want more core boot laptops with good specs, not, you know, exactly. I don't want to buy a ThinkPad X220 if I want to have core boot. No, d- new mm-hmm. stuff yeah. with current gen processors and good GPUs and good screens. Yeah, please. God. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful System76. Well done. Keep fighting a good fight. And I'm definitely down with their uh, laptops now that they're starting to uh, yeah. cut those things out of whole cloth at home. They're yeah. Yeah. Now a that lot. They're actually uh, putting a bit of work into, uh, yeah, and creating like a bit of an entire ecosystem of their own because they have their own OS ubuntu base so you can still make that argument <laughs> but now, in they are fairness, very much <laughs> the newer laptops still have a decided lack of wood trim on them <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure that's coming soon <laughs> and i'm hoping for a oh, pink yeah. one because of emma i want a pink the, i want a, <laughs> I want a pink brushed uh, aluminum but with like wood grain coloring <laughs> mm-hmm. that yeah. could work system 76 you can have that one for free <laughs> great maybe a slot for my atari games uh up next <laughs> nl funding <laughs> let me let me not 0. 0.7.0 with new image hosting yeah they got big news man uh Lemmy is receiving funding from NLNet Foundation, so they're going to give it up 45,000 euros to keep this thing rocking on, which I'm very happy about because you're wondering, like, then what, what, what's a Lemmy? Huh? That guy from The <laughs> Simpsons? I don't know. Think about it like this. I mean, it's That's similar Lemmy. to sites like Reddit, Lobster OS, Rattle, Hacker News, minus the centralized server. So, you know, I understand that everyone wants to decentralize all the things. And this is very much similar to Reddit, Mm -hmm. minus having to have that one single point of failure, which also means ultimately, get ready for this, 8 mil, 10 people will ever use it. But (laughs) how's vote doing nowadays? Mastodon. (laughs) Yeah. But but the other uh, options out there, like Matrix, are are doing pretty well in library. So that's um, pretty By, awesome. you know, open source uh, project <laughs> standards. Yes, I'm sure. Ha, yeah. ha, I have Absolutely users. Absolutely fine. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's one of the things I think about. Uh, that's, that's really neat, man. Uh, you know, the concept yeah. of like a decentralized uh, news aggregation platform. I like that idea because... Mm-hmm. Every single platform has like some things can come up, some things can't. And what I really don't like is uh, not having a rule book, you know? Yeah. It's like, really, really we don't nice. like this stuff this week or this other stuff this <laughs> yeah. week. Keep the yeah. politics and stuff just completely out of it. And you, you could set up your own federated thing. I would say good on them. Yeah. Definitely. It's it's so nice to have a decentralized option to Reddit and which is away from corporate control. And a lot of us pine for those old days of Reddit. I liked the Reddit in the old days of yours, your. And uh, maybe Lemmy will answer that call. Probably not. Really but cool. It's good to have the option. <laughs> I, I, I I'm a man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
so yeah, going in completely the opposite direction, uh, we have KDE, which instead yes. of um, you know uh, decentralizing everything, they are very much centralizing everything on the mm -hmm. uh, development front end. Try because GitLab risk free for thirty days, man, that makes me absolutely <laughs> just like what website am I? On? This is what I do. My brain, my brain directly yeah. just went. Wait, am I the wrong site? <laughs> yeah, well, they have to monetize it somehow because after Microsoft uh, bought GitLab, uh, bought GitHub, and uh, a bunch of projects were like, "We're just gonna go to GitLab now." They kind of need to have a uh, monetization scheme going, so I can mm -hmm. see that. And uh, KDE have decided, you know what? GitLab is where we're going, and they've decided uh, to actually get GitLab themselves involved and uh, try their best to unify everything from, like, the translations to the actual package developments and every single uh, KDE application, like all the different specific ones, had its own repo for the most part, so they have... or they felt like they had to uh, unify everything so that when a new um, prospective developer and um, supporter came in to KDE, they a lot of people were understandably a bit discouraged. And if someone wants to help you, you need to make it as simple as possible for them to help you. Because, yeah, if I walk into a project, it's like, oh, I can do this and I can do that. It's like, well, then you have to register 30 different accounts on 30 different websites. And you need to uh, have three different emails and subscribe to these 10 mailing lists. Uh, or we're not uh, doing anything with you. It's like, you have fun with that. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> so, uh. yeah, it was very much that kind mm -hmm. of situation that KDE are trying to avoid and just have it all in one place it's like you want to help us here's our gitlab yeah. pick a project go <laughs> good on them yeah. hey, man, makes I'm... it so much easier <laughs> yeah i was i was amazed <laughs> i mean i know there were over 200 applications but uh 2600 projects wow yeah. I mean, that's a lot of work because to bring they don't all just all do yeah. yeah they don't just do the uh KDE. KDE as a desktop environment. They also have like um, the KDE frameworks, which everything yeah. runs off of. And you basically, to have that one unified framework that everything can share. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why things break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So is it still worth it, like going to that page with all the projects and hitting control FK? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, and seeing like a thousand yeah. <laughs> instances. Like, oh. <laughs> Good news, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk about Cadmus, man. This is based on the same recurrent neural network as Speech Denoiser, something that I'm using right now to actively remove any type of um, background noise during the show. But this mm -hmm. has a nice little GUI put on top of it. So, you know, it's basically just a front end for RN noise, but it's so easy to set up. I guarantee you, positively, even an arch user could pull this off, man. And <laughs> that's because it's in the AUR. Yes. <laughs> Link in the show notes. Um, I want you to get out there and go play with it. Uh, if you're like, hey, what, what does it really do? You know, you have like RTX voice, which is like the, mm -hmm. it's been trained on a net and there's speech denoiser and there's a noise removal plugin, but that up until recently you'd have to set up Jack, then you'd have to set up a plugin host and wire that in and wire that through like a Pulse Audio bridge. Didn't work. This, Pedro, you just dropped this into a Pulse Audio, right? Yep. Uh, you start it and uh, it gives you two options. Uh, enable uh, noise suppression and disable noise suppression. And if you only have uh, the one like output and the one input like I do uh, it goes all right that's your input so I'm just going to enable noise suppression on that and then you can um, it does a good job of setting the uh, input stream that it creates from the uh, the monitor 
uh, after denoising it, uh, it makes that the default. So if you're using like Microsoft Teams or Skype or Discord or whatever, it goes, oh, that's your default now, is it? Blah. And it's automagical. Mm -hmm. uh, you can actually see like all the different uh, streams and devices, virtual devices that it creates if you open Pavu Control, um, which I did, obviously. And I started like doing yeah. the scratchies on the uh, the microphone pop filter and everything. It's <laughs> it, like the denoised microphone. It's like, oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> I had to actually go at it for it to start uh, registering some scratchiness. So, yeah, no, I, I also tried to test call through Teams, but Teams is not a good benchmark. It compresses the mm -hmm. out of everything, yeah. like everything. <laughs> so, yes. yeah, uh, it's a bit pointless to use it in Teams, but it does work. So it, it's very easy if you have uh, Ubuntu, Neon, Debian, what have you. There's a deb. Just install it. <laughs> yeah, and you know it worked very well. I tested it with Audacity and Mumble, um, and was typing on my keyboard, and it did a very good job at canceling those sounds out. And even though yep. you know during during most podcasts, I'm not using my keyboard except except uh, maybe occasionally to look something up in Google, um, but that doesn't usually happen during the shows. But um, I will definitely be using this for all the other podcasts I do, and it is. It, it is so nice to have a quick and easy option compared to using um, hardware for noise gating, which, you know, I'm usually set up to do hardware, but this is, it's nice to have software noise gating and an easy to use GUI. Well, we do need to point out, this isn't a noise gate. <laughs> yeah, it's this it's is, a suppression. Yeah. <laughs> how, what's the best way to, because when you, I, I know people are going to be listening. When you think of a noise gate, noise gate's going to have a floor trigger on it. So once you get to a point, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to open up and like, hey, I can be loud. Now, this is a good thing. You know, you were talking about keyboards. People have the clacky keyboards and they're like, yeah. how do I stream with my clacky <laughs> keyboard? Get rid of your clacky <laughs> keyboard. They're step one, Brad. Um, <laughs> but to a noise gate would let you do that. Now, this is going to be doing real time noise filtering. So did you test it with a clacky keyboard? Yes, I did. Uh, my uh, it did an all right uh, it did an all right <laughs> job of muffling like keyboards yeah. uh, strikes, but it's it didn't completely remove them. <laughs> yeah, on my reds, it did a, it did a pretty good job, but I have a very very focused mic, so it doesn't pick up the keyboard too much unless I have it right next to the mic. Mm -hmm. Try it out, see how it works for you. Mm -hmm. um, that's got a brilliant. What do we got? Oh, we have one little slice of pie, but before we get out of here, I want to thank each and every one of you over at patreon.com mm -hmm. forward slash Linux Gamecast, supporting everything we do on this network, not Yay. just this show, man. We got stuff rolling out like Pedro on Tuesday, us on Wednesday, Thursday, you're <laughs> back with me because Jordan and myself, you know what? We yeah. got a new series, Young and Blood. We're going to be playing through uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood in co-op. Mm -hmm. It's going to be kind of brilliant, uh, but if you come patron, uh, we have several different levels each with a corresponding reward, except for the Chicago one, but that one's there for other reasons. <laughs> Access to our show notes. You get a custom RSS feed. If you like what we do and you're like, hey man, I, I would like four hours of this extra every week. The uh, Live and Uncut Saturdays, that's in podcast form. Um, I don't know, what, what else do we have, Pedro? The, um, we're horrible at selling stuff. Pre pre super chosen I mean, on Saturday before yeah, the big show. Yeah, you get show. access to uh, the pre pre <laughs> super chosen, and uh, you also have uh, if you want to watch that particular production meeting and everyone having all of the issues. Uh, that is probably if you want to see like the real LGC fire. Uh, I think the pre pre <laughs> super chosen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you want to see the pure LGC fire, what we need to do is install like a drop cam in here. Like <laughs> mid of the week, but I'm like, I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh God. <laughs> it's terrifying, but thank you. Um, that's the reason we're able to do all this and we're able to do it without bringing you ads. We have a very non-for-profit business model of, if you like it, you can support it. Not for profit yeah. being the accurate term there. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, it's kind of hard to make the business case for like, so what do you do? We just give everything away. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what, kids? It's a little pricey keeping um, well over half a terabyte of data online. Ah, mm -hmm. what else do we have? Shirts. 
Yay, yes. merch! Store.LinuxGameCast.com. <laughs> Go there, uh, pick out your favorite design, or uh, if for some reason none of that strikes your fancy, remind Ven to uh, do the, <laughs> the fanny packs already. <laughs> yes. Now, Pedro, do you remember the conversation we had about nagging someone? <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who keeps bringing up the fanny packs. I intentionally yeah. didn't mention it this week because it, it, it was too deep, too deep of a wound, Pedro, that you reopened. <laughs> <laughs> we got that, man. Uh, yeah. You, you can wear some LGC merch all yes. over yes. your face, chest, and I, I mean face too because they just gave me an option to make face masks, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Probably nothing constructive. But, uh, yeah. Also, tune in if you want to learn more about this little mystery moon device. I got a, I got a couple cool. of videos coming out. Um, just time released early for patrons. You get them after the fact, usually about a week later. For everyone else, but I like to give people a sneak peek before they're completely finished. So you can help out old man then be like, you really messed up right there. I'm like, oh, thanks for pointing that out. And sometimes I don't like just go, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing, man. Slice pie. Ooh, pie. that's a very rumpled shirt, Ben. <laughs> with, with the pie on it. <laughs> okay, so this is GNU Health Pie. This is really an awesome project. This is a GNU Health, which expands its support for the Raspberry Pi. The GNU Health project, by the way, is designed to help hospitals run on low-cost software and hardware. And this is their GNU Health Embedded, which is a suite of software that enables real-time monitoring of vital signs in hospital settings. And it also can be used for retrieving information from laboratory instruments and act as a, a family and personal health tracker. And uh, normally their software, you know, uh, they their uh, default software runs on uh, servers and um, you know helps helps the hospitals and organizing um, everything from medical exams uh, to equipment and so this one is specifically made for um, helping uh, real-time monitoring and oh gosh it's this is just an amazing project and on LWW way back when, on episode 164, mm -hmm. I interviewed Lewis Falcon, MD, president of GNU Health from Scale. And that was actually a really amazing conversation. And I just, I have so much passion for this project because it's using open source to help people and uh, cure, help cure people of diseases. And gosh, uh, it could be helpful for COVID. So that was, this is just an awesome, awesome project. What better way for open source? What, what better, you know, there's no better thing for open source to do but to save lives. And I just got a little tongue tied there. I apologize. Yeah, but <laughs> this is unfortunately something that is very necessary because if you've read like the horror stories about people being uh, able to hack pacemakers and, um, morphine dispensers and all other kinds of uh, medical equipment that have any kind of connectivity. Mm -hmm. They're really easy to hack. So hack, hack, hack. hack. <laughs> Let's put a bit <laughs> We're more- We're both tongue tied. <laughs> <laughs> put, put a bit more air behind that H. <laughs> That's pretty cool, but, man. I'm glad to see uh, stuff like this end available. And, and it's always great when you see floss stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> rolling out, and we've learned like during like medical companies, period, are like abnormally ferocious with their patent protection. Like you can't, don't, yeah. even though reverse mm -hmm. engineering is completely like, oh, we're still going to try to sue you though. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. get stopped. <laughs> we'll take you to court. Yeah. we'll lose, but we'll take you to court. <laughs> and and the the costs needed to buy the software that that does these functions, and now with open source, it's free. So that's just that's awesome. That's brilliant. Go check it out. GNUHealth.org. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to get out of here. We've overstayed our welcome, but we'll see you next week. Yeah? Yeah. Sounds <laughs> about right.
Let's roll some credits. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> And if you would like to send some feedback or some hate mail, linuxgamecast.com forward slash contact. It's easy. <laughs> Yay! Our executive producers are producers. We love you all. And our advisors. Every single crazy one of you. You're amazing. Crazy, but amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah your donations make this all work worth it just yep. amazing <laughs> <laughs> yay happy penguin wednesdays 